dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly, we hail, starring Bill Williams in Time Out, the United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where foremost names of the motion picture world join us for your entertainment and plays we know that you'll enjoy. Our star is Bill Williams, and the title of our play, Time Out. This is a gripping story of the prize fight game and about a fighter with the heart of a champion. Our story takes us all to ringside at the battle for the crown. We'll have the curtain for Act One of Time Out immediately after this important message from Wendell Niles. Young men and women, the U.S. Air Force offers you the finest aviation training in the world, and you earn while you learn. Under a new Air Force program, every effort is made to place you in the job for which you are best suited and have the best chance for success. You can become an aviation specialist with steady increase in pay, with job security and a carefully planned program for promotions. For details, visit your U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station right away. And now once again, our producer. It's curtain time and here's Act One of Time Out starring Bill Williams as Bob Howard. <laughs> about a fighter, a young, up-and-coming boxer. It was the night of his most important bout. He was resting on the rubbing table in his locker room. His manager had stepped out to talk to the newspaper men, leaving him alone with his girl. Far off, he could hear the muffled drone of thousands of voices. Yes, it's a, it's a soothing sound. It lulls me. Of course, having Sue nearby helps, too, on, on this, the biggest hour of my career waiting for the championship fight with battling Pabian. All my long years of training and rigorous living were to be finally called into action for the greatest prize in fighting, the championship crown. I'm ready for this one, believe me. Sue, isn't that the buzzer for me? No, Bob. I'll let you know when we're ready. Okay, okay. Are you all right? Oh, you bet. You sure? Every time the same thing. You flutter and worry like a mother hen over its chicks. I do not flutter. <laughs> but you sure worry. Well, I just can't help it, I guess. All those fans around the ring, thousands more listening in on the radios, and television, and newsrooms. Oh, you make it sound real exciting. Keep talking. Well, everybody doesn't have ice water running through their veins. How can you keep so cool? Hidden in my gloves, two little men with fans. Even at a time like this, you can kid. Oh, come on, Sue, relax. All right, I'll relax. If you will. If I were any more relaxed, I'd fall apart. Hey, hey, what time is it getting to be anyway? There's lots of time, dear. Just take it easy. Take it easy. My thoughts went to other hours like this. Back to my first fight in Gary, Indiana. Then farther back. All the way back to my father. I remember the day Dad bought me the greatest gift of all. Hey, you kid, kids, something I thought you might like. Gee, what is it, Dad? Well, open it and see. I'll bet it's a punching bag. Guess again. Open it, will you? All right. <laughs> what, what is it? I wonder what it is. Holy smokes. Gosh, Dad, boxing gloves. Yep, they're regular pro kind, too, with the built-in black eyes. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks a million. Never mind that. Feel that leather. Uh, you, uh, you wanted to be a boxer awfully bad, didn't you, Dad? Yeah, I would have made it, too, if it hadn't have been for... Oh, but, but you sure get around for a fellow who's got a... For a fellow who's got a game leg? <laughs> I do all right, kid. I didn't mean that, Dad. I know, Bob. Here, try these mitts on for size. Let me help you here. Oh, okay, boy. Boy, do they feel good. Yeah, wait a minute. Wait a minute, son. Let me lace them. <clears throat> these laces can mean a lot of trouble. There you are. Gee... They sure fit me swell. I got them exactly your size, the champ size. Let me slip on the other pair on my own dukes here. Mm. Okay. <coughs> okay, fella, yeah. what have your dukes? 
Uh, now, look out. I'm going to throw one your way. Well, let it go. Careful now. Remember, you asked for it, and here it comes. <laughs> Strike one. Simply catch my nature. Okay, now, you try to tag me. Well, I don't want it, Dad. Don't be scared. Why, nobody was ever able to lay a glove on me. Come on, swing. But I don't think I... Come on. Well, well all right. Here it is. <laughs> Dad. Dad, did I hurt you? Mm. No, no. You sure? Sure. This is all part of my battle plan. You see, I pound my nose against your fist till you can't take it anymore. <laughs> Good old Dad. He never lost sight of the goal he had set for me. I was to be the champion of the world. He even went so far as to get a trainer for me while I was still in high school. Franny was just like Dad, all wrapped up in the fight game. Hiya, kid. Oh, hi, Franny. Where's your pop? Oh, he had to go to town. Well, that won't hold us up none from our practicing, will it? Oh, I'm sure of that. Yeah, I know all this rope skipping and exercising gets kind of tiresome, but there's no shortcut. But why can't we just put the gloves on and box? I'm getting to be an old man already. Oh, yeah. Seventeen years getting along, but I don't see no gray hairs in your head yet. Well, I, I never argue with you over training. I, I don't chase after girls or anything oh, like that. Oh, see, by the way, I've um, got a favor to ask you. A favor? Yeah. See, kid, I figure you're getting to the point where you ought to have a nice girlfriend. But just any old girl won't do, see? Franny, I don't... You better have a girl who's interested in the same things you are. You know, boxing and stuff like that. Now, don't tell me. Well, you, you see, her dad used to be a pretty good scrapper himself. So the minute I seen this girl, I, I knew she was meant for you. Franny, you're just wasting time. But I thought... No, that... it's no so. But you... No! Well, okay, okay. Can't shoot a guy for trying. Uh, she's outside. I'll tell her to go on home. Sue, would you mind running on home now? I thought I needed you to help out on some things here, but there's no hurry. All right, Franny. Anytime you need me, just call. Yeah. Oh, Sue, uh, this is Bob Howard. Oh, hello. Hello. Well, I'll be running along now, Franny. It's been nice meeting you, Bob. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Oh, oh Franny, I've, I've been thinking it over, and you know what? I, I think you're absolutely right about what you said before. Absolutely. Sue. Sweet Sue. I remember how clever I thought I was when I first called her that. It was at a school party, and I had walked in late. Oh, Sue, what a beautiful dress. Oh, thank you, Doris. Hi, Sue. Bob, I didn't know you were coming here tonight. I didn't know it either. But aren't you supposed to fight at the Civic Center tomorrow night? That's right. That's why I came over. You know, to the victor belong the spoils. You're the spoils, if you'll pardon the expression. I'm very flattered, of course. But how can you be the victor when you haven't fought the match yet? Oh, I'm psychic. Already I can see the ref holding my hand up in token of sweet victory. <laughs> I lose more boyfriends that way. Not this time. Uh, step this way, please. Wait a minute. Where are we going? Out in the garden. May I ask why? I want to count the stars. Oh, it's certainly lovely tonight. Yeah, lovely. Come here a second. Bob, please, you, you said you were going to count stars. Oh, yes, sir. Well, now there's the Big Dipper. Seven stars. One, One two, two, three, three four, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> now there's the Little Dipper. And right above is the North Star. Where? There. Look up. Is that... Oh, oh Bob. Oh, Bob. I... I love you, Sue. I love you, too, Bob. Sue. Sweet Sue. May I bust in a second? Oh. Franny, what the heck are you doing here? Counting stars. Now, don't try to be funny. What's the big idea? You know the idea, kid. You got a scrap on your hands tomorrow night. Look, Franny, you're just my second in trainer, see? You're not my mother. I'm not your father, either, but he told me to watch out for you all the time. I'm in top shape. I can beat that palooka tomorrow night with no sleep for oh, a month. Okay, okay, Superman, let's go. Nothing doing. I'm not a baby. I'm a man. I've got a mind of my own. Good night, Bob. Be seeing you. What's this? That was that mind of your own. Come on, let's go. That was a nice fight tonight, Bob. Thanks, Sue. Well, you've just about cleaned up this whole region now. Yeah. And that's what I've got to, uh, well... Leave. Leave? 
For where? Chicago. That's where the big timers are. And if I make good, then I... I might even get to fight battling Fabian. I think you ought to give this a lot of thought. You know how I feel about fighting. I love the game. And boxing is my road. You mean it's the road your father chose? Maybe so. But I've got to get to the top. You understand, don't you, Sue? I understand. You'll wait for me. Yes, Bob. I'll wait. I went to the Windy City and started on the long road. I began to make the headlines, and I also began to make money. Then Dad passed away. I guess it wasn't in the cards for him to be there. I began to notice that I wasn't having much trouble making my weight limit. I ate well, but for some reason I was losing poundage. I had an appointment with Dr. Tolson. The same afternoon, I was expecting Sue in town. Bob! Oh, Bob! Sue, sweet Sue. Oh, it's so wonderful seeing you again. Oh, Bob. Oh, Bob, are you all right? You look thinner. Oh, nothing to worry about. I've been training a little too hard lately, that's all. You're overdoing that will to win, Bob. I'm going to be the next champion. I think you are, too. Only if by any chance something prevents you from making it, we're not going to let it spoil things for us, are we? You know we won't. If I ever lose, I promise I'll quit. Only I got a hunch you're going to be the next Mrs. Champ. Say, where are your bags? There, at the checking counter. Well, look, I got a very important appointment that'll only take a few minutes. Would you mind waiting for me here in the coffee shop? Of course not. I hate to leave you like this, but, but it can't be helped. I'll be back in a jiffy. Hello, Dr. Tolson. Hello, Mr. Howard. Take your seat, please. Thanks. How do you feel? Just fine, Doc, just fine. Mr. Howard, we've taken many tests, as you know. You certainly have. The tests have brought out one basic weakness in your makeup. Weakness? I don't like that word, Doctor. But that's what it is. Those little moments when you black out are definitely abnormal. I, I know, Doctor. That's why I'm here. And they're not good when you're engaged in strenuous activity. You mean like fighting? That's it. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? You're to quit boxing if you want to live long. We pause briefly from our story, Time Out, starring Bill Williams, to bring you an important message from our government. Ladies and gentlemen, our Army and our Air Force are critically short of physicians and dentists. Over 2,000 volunteers from these two professions are urgently needed today to safeguard and care for the health of the men and women who, as members of the United States Army and United States Air Force, are serving you and me at home and overseas. Young physicians and dentists particularly those who did not serve in the armed services during World War II, have been asked by their government to act now, to volunteer for duty at once. If you are one of these young physicians or dentists, please write or wire either the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once and volunteer your services. If you know of one of these young physicians or dentists, please call his attention to this urgent message. Thank you. The curtain rises on Act Two of Time Out, starring Bill Williams as Bob Howard. Bob was nearing the ambition of his father, which was to see him crowned boxing champion of the world. Bob's father had passed away before he could witness this achievement. Sue, his girl, was as interested in the fight game as he was, but even she didn't know of Bob's mysterious attacks, which caused him to black out temporarily. Bob didn't let this hold him back, however. That was a fine thing to tell a fighter, wasn't it? Quit fighting or you won't live long. But the attacks didn't repeat, so I went right on toward my goal. The big shot at the crown, worn by battling Fabian. My path took me from Chicago, and I moved on to the big city of New York, where I was to meet a real obstacle in the form of Red Metcalf. Sue was with me during all this time. She sat right behind my corner where I could turn around and look at that streamlined figure of hers. Oh, look, kid, you're going to watch that left to Metcalf. You've been walking into it all night. Okay, okay, so I'm feeling them out. Do you have to do it with your chin? Stay away. Stay away? 
That guy's got arms like an octopus. You better figure him out fast. This is the eighth round. It's going to be awful close if we don't tag him. Why, well, he's ahead oh, on... Bob. Get down, Sue. You're not supposed to be in this ring. Neither are you the way you're going. Bob, listen to me. I've been watching that cap. He's got a weakness. Weakness? Weakness for what? Blondes? No, no. Now, every time he throws that left of his and lands, he lowers his right for a split second. Cross your left over when he does, and you'll cool him off. Are you sure of that? Absolutely. I've been checking and rechecking him. It happens so fast you can hardly catch it. Come to think of it, you might have something there. I was trying to figure out what he was doing wrong. Yeah, except he was so busy beating your ears off, he didn't have time to notice nothing. Well, watch me this round, kiddies. We're going to straighten quite half. I'll... Now get him, Bob. Get him. I'll wrap him up for you in a nice little package and tie it with a blue ribbon. Get going. Good luck. Red Metcalf was beginning to feel his oats a bit. He knew he was ahead on point, and so far I hadn't done much more than the muscle's hair. He came out cautiously and jabbed a left to my face. It didn't hurt but it was the same left he'd been poking into my open countenance all evening. I tried to maneuver him into a nice, cozy corner, but he backpedaled fast. The booing of the crowd got under red skin, and he came out of his shell for a few seconds. He stepped forward, and we exchanged hard rights to the body. Just the same, I wasn't winning the fight. I had to get red soon, or it'll be too late. I remembered what Sue had said about him, dropping his right when he connected with a left. I figured this was as good a time to test the theory. I shot out a right that was purposely short. Red's left flicked out and caught me squarely on the face. The punch hurt, but it was worth it. Now I knew Sue was right. Metcalf had lowered his right for a fraction of a second when his left hook landed. From this moment on, I knew what to do. I pretended to be a little dazed by the blow and stopped short. Red gained confidence. Again, I threw out a right that fell short. Once more, Metcalf's long left jabbed out. It caught me in the face again. But now my left was whistling over toward the spot where his right glove should have been and wasn't! One. Oh, Bob, you two, did it, you did it. Three. Now we're ready for the champion. Oh, boy. Oh, say, kid, you were great. That championship crown is sure going to look good on your head. <laughs> I sure owe you and Sue a lot. I don't think I'd ever gotten this far without you two. Oh, kid, you'd have gotten there all right. It'd just take you a little longer, that's all. Okay, so now let's get to work, huh? I've got to celebrate tonight's win with Sue. She's waiting for me now. Don't get in an uproar. Here, boy. Lay back on this rubbing table, will you? <laughs> ah. Attaboy, attaboy. Now we put this hot oil on, and we'll just rub it in here. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you feel better? Oh, that's swell. Uh, massage yeah. that right shoulder muscle a little, will you, Franny? Okay. I sort of gave it a twist when I tagged red with my left. There. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Hey, you got a little cut over your left cheek here. I better patch it up so you'll look real pretty for Sue, huh? Here, a little of this alcohol disinfected. Go ahead. Okay. Here you are. Now, just hold on. It'll burn. There, there. Hey, doesn't that sting? Hey, Bob. Doesn't that hurt? Uh... Bob, what's the matter? Uh... Kid. Kid, do you hear me? Come on, come on, kid. Snap out of it. Huh? Hey. What's the matter with you? Nothing's the matter with me. What's wrong with you? It's the idea of slapping my face. You were out. Oh, don't be silly, Franny. My gosh, can a guy even relax a minute without you getting all worked up about it? <laughs> Hey, you're pretty light on your toes, too. Oh, but it's easy to be light on the dance floor, Mr. Howard. If one's partner is another Arthur Murray. What is this, a mutual flattery deal? <laughs> it is a little rich, isn't it? Uh, just a moment, Bob. Where are you steering us now? Out to this balcony here. Thought we could count the stars. You can remove your arm now, as long as we're not dancing. Do you really want me to? No. But it seemed like the proper thing to say. I'll bet even after we're married, you'll be worried about the proper thing to say. <laughs> Never mind that. You brought me out to count stars. Now, that's the Big Dipper. And that... Oh, Bob. Bob. Sue, so I... I... Bob. Bob, what's wrong with you? Oh. Oh, Bob, what is it? Here, lean against the railing. There. 
What's wrong? Bob, can you hear me? I... Huh? Bob, you just blacked out. Did... Did I? Yes, you almost fell over. Bob, you better see a doctor right away. No, no, that, that's no good. But you have to. There's something wrong. It's... It's nothing to worry about, Sue. Take it easy. Nothing to worry about? You know better than that. I mean it, Sue. I've had these little attacks before. In fact, I've already gone to see a doctor. The best in the business. He said it was just a family trait. Nothing to it at all. A little temporary amnesia. It passes away like that. Oh, but when you're boxing, what then? Oh, it wouldn't matter. It wouldn't matter. Not much it wouldn't. You standing in the ring not knowing what was going on. I've never had one of these spells in the ring yet. They always seem to come when I, I'm nice and relaxed. Are you sure, Bob? Oh, certainly. And another thing, they only come along once in a blue moon. Oh, I wish I could believe that. Look, Sue, I, I've never lied to you, and I'm not going to start now. Everything I've said is true. All I can do is give you my word. Isn't that enough? I'm sorry. I do believe you, Bob. You don't sound like it. I don't? Okay. I see I'll have to prove it. Now, you must look up in that sky and start counting stars. And I'll show you whether I believe you or not. But first, let me wipe my lipstick off so I won't smear your face. Nothing was going to stop me now, no, sir. I had aimed at this championship too long. And I had the memory of my dad's ambition to help me on my last lap. And now that I was all steamed up and ready to go, it was just like Rainey to suddenly disappear. Hiya, kid. How are things? Well, well. And just where have you been keeping yourself the last few days? Uh, took me a little trip. Didn't have time to tell anyone. I just made up my mind on the spur of the moment and took off. The trip was a complete surprise. It's a surprise, all right. I'll be surprised if Sue ever talks to you again. Leaving us right when we're close to a championship. Yeah, but I'll be right back. Now where are you going? Over to see Sue. I've got something awful important to talk to her about. Okay. But before you go, I want you to do something for me. Take this money and bet every cent on me against the champ. Here I am tonight at the climax of my career, waiting for the championship fight with Batlin Fabian. All the long years of training are finally to be called into action for the greatest prize in fighting. I'm ready for this one. Sue, there's the buzzer for me. No, it isn't, Bob. Just relax. It must be. Seems awful late to me. I've been on this rubbing table a long time. Let me see you watch. Hey, it's 10.30. I've got to get in the ring. The fight's going to start. Bob, please. The fight isn't going to start. It isn't? Why not? Because the fight's over. You were knocked out. Huh? That's right. I... I was knocked out? Yes. Half an hour ago. I'm sorry, Bob. Come here, Sue. Oh, Bob, dear. Sue. Sweet Sue. Well, I promised I'd quit if I lost. <laughs> but now I don't even know if we can even afford to get married for a while. You see, I bet every cent I had on myself. Don't you worry. You'll always make good. Come on in, Franny. And help celebrate my ring retirement. Oh, you're smart to do it, kid. And look here. Here's a nice king-size nest egg to start hatching. Wait a minute. What's this money for? It's the winning from the dough you gave me to bet. But I told you to bet it all on me. I know, kid. I know. There's something else I know, too. I know all about your visit to Dr. Tolson. I went back to Chicago to check up on you after you passed out on the rubbing table that time. Well, how do you like that? I knew I couldn't talk you out of this championship fight. So now, may I leave you with your money and wish you both a happy good night? Now, wait a second. What now? You're not through seconding me yet, brother. Tomorrow you're going to be in my corner as our best man. Curtain falls in the final act of Time Out. Our star, Bill Williams, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. This is important. This is urgent. Over 2,000 young physicians and dentists are needed as volunteers at once 
for service in the United States Army or United States Air Force. These physicians and dentists are required to safeguard the health of the men and women who are serving our country in the armed services. If you are a physician or a dentist, you are needed now. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force at once, volunteering for active duty. Let me repeat that. Write or wire the Surgeon General of the United States Army or the Air Surgeon of the United States Air Force today. Or see your local U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. Now back at the microphone, our star, Bill Williams, and our producer. Bill, it seems some time since you've been our star on Proudly We Hail, so don't you think we should bring our audience up to date? Sure, but what'll we talk about? What's your favorite subject? Barbara Hale, my wife, and, and little Jody. Now, wait a minute. We'll talk about Barbara sometime when she's on the show. This is Pappy's day to howl, remember? We're going to talk about you. Can't talk about Barbara and Jody? No, I know you when you get wound up about them, and I can't say I blame you. We all love Barbara, and we think she's beautiful, and little Jody is precious. No, I want to hear about your pictures. Well, I worked with Jimmy Stewart and June Allison at MGM on the Stratton story. I played the catcher, Eddie White. I know that Jimmy Stewart and all of you did a wonderful job in the Stratton story, but I hear some of those big league pictures really fixed you. Fixed me? CP, they tried to kill me. There was no substituting a big league catcher to backstop them. Among the pitchers were Bob Gillespie from the White Sox and Gene Bearden from Cleveland. Gene Bearden was the hero of the World Series last year. And what a pitcher. But those guys don't know what it means to throw an easy ball. When I got home that first night, my hand looked like a piece of raw ham. And the same size. They pre-cooked it, believe me. <laughs> oh, yes, I, I asked them about batting and about hitting their fastball. And when do I start swinging? Well, I stood up at the plate and got all set and watched the wind-up. Boom. The ball was in the catcher's mitt before I even got the bat off my shoulders. Well, uh, how do you hit those pitchers? CP, I never did find out. <laughs> well, I got to get going, and I've had a swell time. But before I leave, who's your star next week? Next week, Bill, and ladies and gentlemen, that well-known and popular actor, Brian Donlevy, will be our star. And the title of our play, The High Timber. This is a dramatic story of a lumber camp foreman who races time in an important cutting contract with a promotion as his reward, but finds a deadly series of obstacles confronting him which require his skill, courage, and fist to surmount. That should be a good show. And we'll all be listening at home. So long, CP. Goodbye, Bill. Be sure to join us next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Brian Donlevy joins us to star in a dramatic story, The High Timber. Until then, thanks for listening. And cheerio from Hollywood. Bill Williams appears to the courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars in this program. The script was by Bill Dench. Music by Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>